Okay, so we're going to talk about having one pauldron designed and then making a double pauldron design so you can wear them both. But these are asymmetrical pauldrons. They require the most thought in terms of design. So we already have one cream formed wing fin sort of shape. And the other one has been wet formed to just the fin wing geometry. But what it doesn't do is have any contouring that matches the body. So at this point, there's enough memory in the vegetable tan to tell you how it's going to behave. But what we want to do is lay that across the body. So not only does it look like a wing or fin, but it's movable and it fits with everything we're doing. So we've already done that step with the first side. And now we're going to wet the second side and then get good dynamic flow for both of them. So the first thing we've got to do is get this leather wet again. And that's going to take a minute for it to absorb all that moisture. But once it becomes pliable, we should be able to get everything to fit in a manner that allows us to move freely. I'm going to have to open these little cracks up if you plan on bending any of that deep stuff. The water isn't going to flow until you'll have limited curves on these steeper regions. So as we're waiting for that water get absorbed. Any little details we know we want to preform, we can start testing for their shape. And you can tell that the tips are very well creased, but still super dry and rigid. So we're going to get that to absorb even more water. And I like this spray bottle because it gives you a lot of surface coverage and you can tell how quickly it's getting absorbed into the pores. But you're looking for compliance. You're, you're wanting to see that the leather itself is responding to the moisture and the forming. If you try to form it while it's too dry, it's going to be brittle and just crack. So you want to make sure that there's enough water in there for all of your little intricate details that you formed to start moving again without losing their total shape. So at this point, we now have enough give to where we can open up the wing a little, but we still have those nice creases. And we just want to redefine the creases that we definitely want to be most prominent. Because when we start to lay that over across the surface, we don't want to lose this curve. We just want to add a secondary curve that fits the body. Now we have our first pauldron already sealed up with tape. We can take our second pauldron and open it up so that it's laying over the body the way we want to see and that we have something that can act as a, a clasp or a closure mechanism in the front. So we don't want to go too tight on the neck. We want to make sure that that rolls over to the back of the shoulder, right? This tiny web space here where everything converges, all the bones come to one spot. That's where we need to really roll. So we're going to want to just reinforce that curve, that secondary curve as we go around. And so it's a cross between rolling the shoulder curve in and then making sure that the edge curves of the boning are still in place. Right? And that's going to give us something that will drape over the body well and give us the aesthetic we want. And we don't want something that's just sort of flopping. So when you see that you've got too much give in an area, that's when you want to take the time to form it so that 
the wing itself is doing the behavior that you like while still giving you the range of motion that you need, right? And if you can't do that range of motion, if you're finding it still too limited, you're going to have to adjust the contour of the wing that's laying on you, right? The biggest problem you have is holding it in place and then making sure that when it dries, the contour across the neckline, where the collarbone is, stays in place, and then the remaining contours match something that goes up and away from your body. Okay? So we're going to pull this back region in further. So we have something that wraps around the shoulder. And then this section of wing, we actually want to stick out more. So our final profile looks a little closer to oh. something like this. If at any point you're doing your shaping and you realize you need some piece of material to prop under your leather to match that shoulder profile, that's always a good thing to do. So you can go to your kitchen and grab a dish or if you have a rock, that's a good shape. Uh, but you want something that's not going to react with the water. You don't want metal, especially steel, because with the vegetable tan, it will dye it black. But you do want some large inert shape to hold the form if you can't get it to lay the way you intended. Okay. So any little details you want to add, any little flourishes, just wet form those as you go to kind of give that elegant sweeping you're trying to do or that raw nature that gives the depth of feel in the piece of armor you're trying to make. 